Hello there, shalom. Uh, I hope, oh, that light's probably bugging, bugging you guys. Okay. <clears throat> so, so I'm gonna make the video to explain uh, the verse where Yahusha is saying, "You must drink my blood and eat my flesh." Okay. Remember that that Yahusha spoke in a dialect that was from a specific part. A specific part of of town and uh they had they had some uh some idioms and some isms that were a little bit strange to to the rest of the uh the people around also remember that the people that were around at the time they had been highly influenced by the Hellenistic, uh, the Hellenistic culture, and by the the Talmudic, Pharisaic, Rabbinic, uh, you know, teachers that were actually Babylonians. <laughs> okay. Um. So, so here we go. Okay, I learned this early in seminary, and um, seminary is actually where. I came out of, uh, you know, the unbiblical stuff and, and started uh, digging into the Hebrew roots. Because in seminary, that's what you learn. You learn the Hebraic roots of the scriptures. You know, so I just clicked like, what? Anyways. Okay, so, so back to the ancient, ancient, ancient language. Uh, not just the ancient language, but remember that in, for example, in Revelations... Yahusha and Yahuwah call themselves the Aleph Tav, or in the ancient uh, script, in the ancient letters, it would be the Aleph and the Tu, T-U, the, the Tav is not a Tav, it's a Tu, and the Aleph, okay? So the very first letter and the last letter, the first letter and the last letter. So let me give you a little something. The the Allah uh, is is a is is pictured in the pictograph language as a sacrificial animal. Let me see if I can bring it up right here. I actually have some notes right here. Let's see. Uh, it's gonna be backwards, but that right there is the ta the Allah, and it's a sacrificial animal. And then let's see. Um, let me see if I can point point to the one. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. The one right there, the two, is that one that looks like a cross, right? Okay, so, in, in ancient, um, in the ancient world, before, before Christ, or before Messiah, um, we're talking, like, uh, in the time of Abraham, okay? Maybe even before Abraham, early, early, we're talking like early in the in the time period, when a covenant, when a legal legally binding contract was made, when a covenant was made, the the prized bull or the prized ram, the the most expensive, the most beautiful of all the animals in the in the possession of of the one of the people was was uh taken you know preferably like the the prize spotless most precious most expensive most most um valued of of the horned animals was taken and it was slaughtered actually was cut in half okay and uh its blood was drained and the two you know one half of the people of the covenant would take one half of the animal and the other half would take the other half. And um, both of the parts of the animal would be consumed by fire. And both of the pieces of the animal would be consumed in a, in a dinner feast. Okay, so the, the both people that were entering into this legally binding covenant, they would uh, eat the, the sacrificial animal and they would have dinner and and have merriment and it would be a covenant between the two people now also two sticks or actually one stick was made uh broken 
and that was also kind of like the the receipt almost if you want to say and um each person in the covenant would be given one part of the stick so the the stick would be cut in half and so if there was ever any dispute between anybody they would say look i have the one half of the stick and the other person has the other half of the stick we're in a legally binding contract so if you want to look prophetically into the pictographic language don't let anybody tell you that there is no profound meaning in the pictographic language. Let me tell you that the earliest of the Proto-Canaanite, the what people call the Yahudith or the the Abarith, um, the the language was not like our language. It wasn't it wasn't concept driven. It was action and thing driven. Okay, so for example. Um, Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to digress, but I'll just I'll just uh, stay on point. So, okay, the alaf, the 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 alaf letter is that horned animal, okay, and it means the head of the household, the head of the the head of authority, the head of importance, the head of the strongest, the most important, the you know the head of the family, okay. And when you see the alaf, the kind of, you know, horned animal looking letter, it is always refers to Yahuwah, that letter by itself, okay? And the two, or the, what they call in modern, the tav, is the two sticks, okay? So think about what the alef tav, or the alaf tu, means. Uh, the two sticks in the letter two uh, meant... A covenant promise, okay, that that whoever was in that covenant, okay, had part of the two sticks. Now, uh, look at prophetically of, of the Alaf two, the sacrificial animal, the sacrificial lamb, would be slaughtered to fulfill the covenant. Okay, so the Alef Tav, the beginning and the end, the two bookends of the language. The sacrificial animal, who is the father and is the son, you know, would be the 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 most prized sacrificial animal. Okay, I'm not saying that Yahuwah, okay, was the sacrificial animal. But in a sense, remember, Yahusha and Yahuwah are echad. They're in unity, okay? Yeah, uh, Messiah has said that those that have seen the son have seen the father, Okay. So in a, uh, well, I don't want to get too caught up in, in strange things. Anyways, the, the sacrificial lamb would be sacrificed for the covenant, the two sticks that would someday be once again one stick, okay? So with this understanding, with this ancient understanding, Messiah was trying to tell people that it was that he was bringing the people back into covenant marriage that his work was a covenant marriage that he was redeeming okay in a sense he was redeeming the fathers well not the fathers but well yeah okay he was redeeming the bride that had been divorced because of her disobedience she was divorced now remember those of you who know torah know that when a when a when a wife is divorced she cannot be free from the marriage law until the husband dies, okay? When the husband dies, then a kinsman redeemer can come and and uh, take take that, that bride. And if he wants, he can redeem her so she doesn't live homeless and, and uh, you know, in exile. Okay, so if we think in the Basora, the message of Messiah, okay, the bride was was disobedient she was cast away she was divorced and the very groom himself was the sacrificial animal okay and when he died the wife the bride was free from the marriage law stipulation and was now free to be remarried okay so the sacrificial animal was slain the blood was drained and the body of the sacrificial animal was to be consumed. Remember, you got to think things in a Hebraic understanding. 
You got to think things in a Hebraic context, linguistical, cultural, historic context, and not a Greek or Western ideology. Messiah is in us and we are in him. There is an intercourse covenant marriage, okay? There is a knowing, there is a knowledge. Remember, in the ancient language, the knowing, the knowledge, okay, was as when Adam knew his wife, Hua, and, you know, that was an intercourse, okay? There is that type of spiritual type of marriage covenant. Remember, Messiah says, my yoke is easy, okay? He's the groom, and we are yoked to his easy yoke, okay? Anyone who says that the following the commandments is hard, it's not. When you are truly immersed by the Ruach and the fire that Messiah brings to cleanse you with, like like it says in the prophecy of, uh, ah, man, you know, I always think to look him up in, in, and find out his true name, but I'm going to say it in English anyways. Ezekiel. The prophecy in Ezekiel that, that you would be the new creation, that one new man. Um, uh, so, oh man, I lost my train of thought. Anyways. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, that covenant would be, would be renewed. Okay. So back to the whole spilling the blood and consuming the flesh. Remember, Messiah went and had that that Passover uh, dinner with his with his uh, Talmudim with his disciples, and they ate. Okay, all this is Hebraic, you know, covenant, 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 covenant. There is a supper. There is a sacrificial animal that is eaten. the The wine is is uh, partaken of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remembered my where I was going with the knowing, the no, know, the knowing and the knowledge. Okay. That is, that is the, the understanding that Messiah was trying to give us. So in that, in that, uh, in that phrase, he's saying he is the sacrificial animal and to consume the sacrificial animal, to eat it is, is a, is an explanation that you are supping, you are having supper, you are, consuming of the of the of the tradition the moedim uh dinner okay that is a uh that is something that that people do in the family together as a sign of covenant okay drinking of the wine uh back to what i was saying in the beginning that when you were entering into a legal contract the the animal's blood was spilled okay it was drained and wine was drunk uh, during that covenant feast. The animal's flesh was consumed by all the people of the families of both people entering into covenant. Okay? So it's not something gross that Messiah is, is telling us to cannibalize him. It is a prophetic and beautiful feast that is bringing us back into covenant marriage. Okay? But but the people didn't understand because they had fallen away from the Hebraic understanding. They had fallen into Greco-Roman uh, pluralism and syncretism and and Hellenism and all kinds of other isms that were not the isms of Messiah. Okay, an ism is a specific teaching based on a specific human being. Okay, so we should be <laughs> studying Messiah isms and not. Greekisms or Romanisms or any other isms. Okay, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys search this out, and uh, many many archaeologists and and uh, scholars will call this like ancient Mesopotamian uh, covenant feasts, the practice of of killing an animal for a, for a contract, the cut the contract of two sticks being broken. All that kind of stuff. You can look this up. I mean, I learned it in seminary at a, at a you know, it was a Christian university. But, you know, universities try to teach you unbiased. They just kind of give you all of the information and, and you just take it in and, and hopefully you'll synthesize the correct thing. I mean, I went to private Christian uh, seminary and I came out Hebrew roots, you know, because everything I read was Hebrew roots, <laughs> you know, 
I mean, that's how that's how the Ruach showed it to me. But then again, you know, I come from a Sephardic background. Okay. Anyways, uh, Shalom, and uh, I hope you guys like this video.